So if you're ready to start setting up your author website, you're going to have to choose a domain name or a URL so that people can type it in and find your site. It's kind of like the address of your site. So you're going to have to make some tough decisions. And the first one is, do you need an author website that's yourname.com? Or do you want a publisher website for your books and your publisher? Um, I could have DerekMurphy.com. The reason I don't like to have an author website is if the website is just about me, I can only talk about my books or what I'm doing. And that's okay if I'm already famous, if people know who I am or they care about what I'm doing, but they might not. And I might want to try to attract other readers who might be interested in my blog by talking about things that aren't directly related to me. So instead of having an author platform that's just DerekMurphy.com, I'd probably want to make something broader that's more of a community or a theme-driven website. Because if I'm writing, for example, if I want to sell paranormal romance books, if I have paranormalromance.com or paranormalromancebookreview.com, that's too long, but if I have something like that, then it's easy for me to put up content. Because I can blog about anything related to paranormal romance, I can talk about other famous best-selling authors, I can review other books, and all of that content will bring in the right kind of readers and make it easy for them to discover me and my books. You might want to do both. Um, you might want to have a static author website that's DerekMurphy.com and just has your books, your bio, but also have a broader community website where you can put more content. I would also not recommend doing a publisher website. Maybe you're thinking if you're self-published, it'll sound better if you have a publishing website instead of just an author website. So instead of DerekMurphy.com, I could have something like, and we'll get into it in the next video about how to choose a publisher name, but it, for example, if I'm writing thrillers and my publishing name is um, bloodyknife.com or bloody knife, and I, I want to have like a imprint on my logo on the spine of my book that says bloody knife and there's a picture and that's my publishing imprint. That's all fine, but if you've just got your own books, if you're a, a book publisher that's only publishing your own books, that's a little bit transparent and kind of weird. People will think, why didn't you just have an author website? Why are you trying to pretend like you're a real publisher instead of just promoting your own books? So it can be kind of a weird issue. Also, you have the same thing with if that's my publishing imprint, I'm probably only going to blog about my books or my book news. And that's fine if you're driving outside traffic, but if you're trying to write articles that bring in traffic, you're going to find limitations with that domain name. So what you want to really look for, ideally, is something that's broad enough to cover not only your author website, so it'll have your bio and about the author, but also all the books you plan to write, not just this one book. And that's why you also don't want to have something like um, the name of the book. So if the name of my book is uh, Prescient, because that's a good name for a book, I don't really want to have Prescient.com because that's only going to be a website I can use to promote that book. And that's really going to be a drawback because I would have to make a new website for every book. What you do want to do is have a website that's open enough to encompass all the books that you're going to write. However, it's got to focus on a specific type of reader. So for example, I already have a lot of websites for nonfiction stuff where I talk about nonfiction because for nonfiction you want to be teaching something. So I have websites about book marketing or um, building a creative business because I can blog about those themes and also build my platform and also sell my books that are related to that platform. But you don't want a website that tries to do so much that you split readers which is why I'm going to be building some new websites just for my fiction because right now, even though I have a pretty big platform for nonfiction, those followers, those fans who are drawn to those websites for the articles I've been writing, they may not be interested in the fiction books that I plan on writing. So if I try to market all of those new fiction books with my previous websites, I'm going to find a very small amount of crossover between the people who are interested in what I'm talking about on those blogs and trying to get them into buying my fiction books. It's just not the same platform. So what I need to do is develop a new platform that's focused around fiction, that's 
got a broad enough topic to encompass all the fiction books I'm going to write. And that's a little bit difficult because, as I'll talk about in the next video, I'm going to write a lot of different things. And even though they're going to be in a lot of different genres, which some people will argue is a mistake, all of my books are going to have similar writing styles. They're going to be about similar topics. Um, I think the readers who enjoy one of my books, one of my fiction novels, they're also going to enjoy the other books that I'm writing because they're all going to be similar enough, even if the content is pretty different. They're going to have the same themes. They're going to talk about the same things because that's what I'm interested in and that's what I write about as an author. So in the next video, we're going to actually try to go through the process of picking a domain name for my author platform. And uh, I'll show you down below some of the tools I'm going to use to use that.